friendlies <laughs> welcome back to my rv life i have to tell you it's good to be home this is probably the first video after the hike that isn't about the hike and my first video back in my rig boondocking in the national forest doing what I love and I'm so excited really to be back I really am I have a really good life I can drive to beautiful remote places like this in Oregon and get the solitude that I like and need and desire and go for hikes that don't end in sleeping on the ground at night <laughs> even though that really wasn't that bad I really didn't mind that too much I had a really great sleeping system but anyway, welcome back to boondocking life. I guess that's what I should call it. Uh, as I mentioned in the video talking about how uh, the hike had ended or how I had ended the hike and that I had more videos to come, I said that I had some exciting news coming at the end of the hike and that's where we are today. I have something to share with you. I had a couple of uh, epiphanies on the trail that um, really uh, are some pretty big changes for my life and for my channel. And so today I want to share with you what that is. So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back. And I'm wearing my Capone shirt today. It's been almost a year since he passed, and he's still in my heart and in my thoughts every single day. And uh, so thinking about him today, and when I share this news with you, because when, when Capone passed, I had mentioned that one of the things that I wanted to embrace was my freedom. And that meant that I would be free to hike as much as I want or as long as I want and that I would be free to travel the world, go where I want and maybe live abroad, maybe join the Peace Corps. When I started out on this journey three and a half years ago, there were so many things that I wanted to do that I wasn't able to do because I had Capone with me. And I really wasn't, you know, a lot of you were like, get another dog, get another dog. And I was like, I don't want another dog. I want to be free. <laughs> I want to be able to do some of the things that I had not been able to do. And so when I was hiking the trail and spent two months on the Pacific Crest Trail, uh, I thought a lot about what do I want to do next? And I really kind of hoped that being out on the trail for two months would help me get in touch with that inner part of myself enough to figure out what my next step is. Uh, and, and it did. That is, that is one of the things that I got out of my hike. And I think as I mentioned in the last video, that hike, I really believe now, and especially since I'm editing videos, I really believe that hike would have been a lot easier and maybe even more enjoyable if I had had somebody with me doing it. I don't say that very often. I'm very independent. I I like being alone. I love traveling abroad alone. I've done it a couple of times. I love hiking alone. But for a two-month hike, which is day in and day out of, of strenuous, you know, um, monotonous hiking, I do think that that would have been a lot easier in many ways if I had more uh, company and if I had done it with someone, someone special. And so that made me realize that you know, all of my plans to travel the world, to maybe live abroad, and, and really what I was thinking I wanted to do was really just put a backpack on my back and travel the world indefinitely. Just go from place to place, shooting videos, and just, you know, making my life and my work about my life traveling around the world. That's really what I thought I would do. But on the trail, I realized that by doing that, I'm going to be putting myself... I'm going to be isolating myself even more. Um, I'm a member of a couple of uh, digital nomad groups, especially a female one online. And what I hear a lot is how hard it is to maintain relationships and friendships since they're traveling so much and being in new places all the time. And, and in my thoughts alone on the trail, I thought, is that really what I want to do? Since Capone passed... I've realized more than ever that I need people in my life and that maybe I have not given friendships and companionship enough 
weight in my life. I've spent three and a half years mostly alone. I really felt alone once Capone passed. And I think that this chapter of my life is more about relationships, more about companionship and maybe kind of looking back on some of the friendships and relationships I let go of a little too easily and thinking, you know, maybe I can work at that a little bit more. Maybe I can work at new relationships and really put the effort into some new companionships, some new relationships, or maybe even rekindling some old relationships in my life. And so that's the biggest thing I got out of my John Muir, or I'm sorry, my Pacific Crest Trail hike was that freedom doesn't really mean a whole lot if I'm doing it alone. Uh, all I kept thinking on the trail which was a big drastic difference from when I did the JMT. When I had the JMT, I worried about Capone the whole time. Um, and I stressed about him being out there alone without me. And I looked forward to going home to Capone. And on the Pacific Crest Trail, sorry. All I kept thinking is I have nobody and nothing to go back to. And if I continue on this down this path or down this road of travel the way I, I think I want to travel or the way I thought I wanted to travel, I'm just going to keep isolating myself. I'm going to keep being alone. And so I realized that freedom isn't free. It doesn't mean that much if I'm going to be alone all the time. Um, you know, I'm 52 years old. I know I keep saying 54. <laughs> I, I don't know why. I have it in my head that I'm 54 and I keep having to do the math. I'm like, no, I'm only 52. Um, so I'm 52 years old. And, uh, you know, as someone told me recently, I have mastered being alone. And maybe it's time for me to master relationships. Maybe it's time for me to just learn what has eluded me for so long and how to actually connect and bond to someone else or something else and, um, you know, and learn and, and just put my heart out again. Maybe, maybe that's what this part of my life is about. And so, um, yeah, so that's really a lot of what I got out of my hike. And that brings me to the changes in my life and in my channel. And, um, and what's next? I would like to introduce you to Huckleberry. <laughs> this is my new companion, the new love of my life, Huckleberry. Yeah, I decided that what does freedom really mean if I'm alone all the time? And all of a sudden, my heart opened up right around the same time as the, um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, the 20, like the 27th day on the trail, 26 days was the longest I had ever been on the trail, on a trail before missing Capone. And I thought about Capone a lot the first 26 days and somewhere around the second half of the hike, I just started opening up to the idea of maybe it was time for a new love of my life. So this is Huckleberry. <laughs> and the reason I named him Huckleberry is because if you'll remember, my excitement on the trail when I discovered huckleberries and I don't know at this point because I haven't edited all my videos but I don't remember if I told you but I remember thinking I want my trail name to be huckleberry because I love that line in the movie I think it's tombstone how many of you seen tombstone and Val Kilmer says I'm your huckleberry I love that line I just always have loved that line I mean basically he's like I got your back dude I got your back I'm here for you I'm your friend no matter what I got your back and I just love that line because he's so cool. You know, he's like sick and dying. And he's like, I'm your huckleberry. And so I got really excited about the huckleberries on the trail. I got really excited about, I want, you know, I want to be your huckleberry. And so when I was tossing around names for my guy here, um, when I got him home, I picked him out at four weeks old. So I had to wait four weeks to get him. He's been with me about 12 days now. He's 10 and a half weeks old. And I decided, and after I think a day of having him home, um, after tossing around a bunch of names, Huck, Huck is his name, Huckleberry. He's my Huckleberry. He's got my back. He's my buddy. He's gonna be my loyal companion. <laughs> and this is my new RV life, Carolyn and Huck. Hi, welcome to your new life. Hi, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you're gonna be awesome, buddy. Oh, you're just gonna be awesome. What do you think? What do you think? 
Oh my god. <laughs> Hi, buddy. We got to give you a name. Yeah, we do. Oh, buddy, what? Hey, what? What do you think? This is your new life. You think it'll be okay? You're going to be a good co-pilot, huh? Yeah. Or the places we're going to go. What's your name? What do you think we should call you? Does not mean I am forgetting my buddy Capone. In fact, I'm thinking about him more than ever. Um, and I think as a horrible joke, he's up there somewhere and sent me this rambunctious, crazy puppy who loves to bite my arms. <laughs> but we're doing, I mean, okay, so you want to know, you want, you probably, oh, here, let's, let's get a close up. You want to get a close up? <gasps> Say hi, audience. Say hi, friendlies. Hi, I'm Hawk. Say, I'm Hawk. I'm Hawk. <laughs> yeah. So don't let this calm demeanor right here fool you. He is full of energy. He's a healer and border collie. Both extremely energetic, intelligent, independent, and loyal breeds. So that's why I chose him. I did buy him from a breeder. And here's why. Uh, I wanted... Because of the way I live, I thought it would be best to get a puppy, a brand new puppy, to learn how to live like this. Sure, Capone did okay. It took him a little while to adjust uh, to living in the RV and then the wandering off and everything like that. And I thought because I move every couple of weeks and it's new sights and new sounds and basically kind of like a new territory and a new home every couple of weeks, I thought it would be best to train a puppy from day one to live this life. Rather than I did with, with a friend of mine, I went and visited a kennel, um, a, the dog pound, the humane, whatever, the SPCA. I looked at some there, uh, you know, most of them a year, two years old. And I just thought it would be harder to train a one or two year old dog, especially one who's grown, you know, 55, 60 pounds, because that was really the size I wanted to try to train a dog that big and that old after who knows what kind of background it had, I, I just thought that that would have been a recipe for, for disaster, not only for me, but for the dog as well. Uh, I just, I, I, I don't know. This is such a different life than most other dogs probably have lived that I thought training them from day one made the most sense. So I looked around. I literally, what did I get? I picked him out a week after I was off the trail, I think. I had already put a deposit down on him. And I look, I researched a bunch of different breeds. Part of me really wanted another Rottweiler mix. That's what I've had. Uh, but for a couple of reasons, that didn't make sense. Number one, size in the RV. You know, my first Rottweiler was 100 pounds. That wouldn't make sense in an RV. Number two, they don't do very well in heat. Uh, this breed rated four out of five stars for heat and cold tolerance. So that was part of the reason I chose him. Um, he was also one of... I didn't even know nine he had a lot of litter mates I didn't count and most of them were dark and I chose him because he's white because I figured he would do better in heat um so uh so yeah so I really would have loved another Rottweiler uh, the other thing Rottweilers only live to be like nine this guy's lifespan should be around 12 um I wasn't you know, of course, that considering I lost Capone just a year ago, that was definitely something. Um, considering energy was another one. Yeah, he's a cattle dog. Um, and I'm really Australian Shepherd. No, what is he? Border Collie and uh, Blue Healer, which is Australian cattle dog. So they were bred to, to, to herd cattle. Okay, here. How's that? So he's got a lot of energy. And I want a dog who can backpack with me. I mean, this, this PCT backpacking adventure was just the beginning of my new backpacking adventures. Uh, I don't want to go out for two months again. I think that was too much for me. Uh, I don't think through hiking is my thing. I think that the longest I might want to go out is a couple of weeks. And as soon as this guy is big enough to get a backpack, he's going to get one. And so what I was thinking is his energy for his, his herding instinct and his energy, uh, would be perfect companion for me to really help me get out too. And it's already working. I mean, we have to go out four or five times a day and get a ton of exercise. He's got a lot of energy, huh, bud? Huh? So, um, yeah, what else? He's going to be 
uh, probably between 50 and 60 pounds is, is how he is the biggest he's going to get. So I think that's a good size for the RV. We're already working, um, you know, I'm working with him every day, already starting to train him. He doesn't like riding in the rig. <laughs> that's been a problem. So we're slowly working on that. He's actually gotten to the point now. Hey, what's that? <gasps> what is that? That's your rawhide. He's teething, aren't you? You get so cute. You... And he's got puppy breath. Oh, I wish you could smell his puppy breath. You don't like riding in the rig, do you? No. No. But at least now he doesn't hide under the chair um, and shake and cry the whole time, which he did like the first time we went anywhere. Um, now he'll lay in his bed. And a couple times I've even gotten him to sit in the front seat, uh, in the co-pilot seat, in Capone's old perch. I've gotten him to sit up there with me uh, for like a half hour, 45 minutes one day. We drove really slow on a, on a mountain road and he did pretty well up there. So we'll get there. It was scary for him at first, you know, the rig is loud and it has, I mean, his whole world is moving and shaking and vibrating, you know. So we'll get there. Let me see, what else? Huck, Huckleberry. He's had one set of, sh two sets of shots. No, one set of shots. He's gonna be getting his second set of shots in, um, what, a week and a half. And uh, I have been sticking around Oregon. I bought him in Oregon and uh, I found a vet in Oregon that he's seen already and I'm gonna see, he's gonna see the same vet. So even though he had his first set of shots when I got him, I took him to a vet anyway. I just wanted to get him checked out, make sure he seemed healthy and all of that and, you know, he got a clean bill of health. Everything looked good. And I scheduled his next set of shots with them. And so that's coming up in a week and a half. But then I'm just going to have to go to another vet wherever I am in my travels. But then when I get to my home base, I will will go to a vet there. So I, I, help, I will have established vet care in basically, uh, you know, two, well, two places. I'm thinking up here where he went to the vet first. Um, and then see, here he goes. Ow. Good! Oh my gosh, that was so good! That was so good! That was so good! Oh, that was so good, puppy! Oh, look at that adorable face. So yeah, so from now on, or from so, this is what I'm going to be doing for the next uh, foreseeable future, and I am going to be showing you everything that I am doing to train Huck, a brand new puppy, ten weeks old. He was eight weeks old when I got him. How to live in an RV, how to travel with me, how to be a good companion, um, how I'm going to train him on and off leash, how we're going to handle being in different situations, how I'm going to socialize him, how I'm going to establish vet care, what he's going to eat how we're going to exercise and eventually how we're going to backpack together and how I'm going to train him to do that. So a lot, a lot to come. Uh, I know a lot of you have missed Capone tremendously and a lot of you have, um, really been hoping I would get a new big, a new furry traveling companion. So I'm convinced you're going to end up falling in love with Huck if you haven't already <laughs> as much as I have. Like I said, though, he's not replacing Capone, that's for sure. Capone is still with me every minute of every day. Laughing his ass off at me and this puppy. <laughs> Capone didn't like puppies. He was an old guy. He didn't have the patience for puppies. And I get it. He's a handful, that's for sure. So there is going to be here. Oh, oh hold on. Oh, here, here, <gasps> here. How's that? Oh, the hair. Oh. So there are going to be a lot more... I mean, just imagine, imagine the possibilities <laughs> of amazing videos with this guy. Here, what do you think? So Huck and I are gonna be taking the country by storm. I still also have some pretty big, uh, don't worry, I still have some pretty big adventures with Huck um, in mind. So um, yeah, just stay tuned to see what that might be. And in the meantime, I hope I'm just gonna overwhelm you with cuteness. Say bye. Okay, we're gonna need to shake him. Oh no, we dropped it. So, you ready? You ready, Huck? Thanks so much for hanging with me. I hope that you are excited. Hey, don't bite my face. I hope that you are excited about the new addition to my life and my channel, Carolyn and Huck's RV Life. What do you think, Huckleberry? He's my Huckleberry. All right, 
See you next time. I don't know. I'm, I'm brimming with excitement. I hope you are too. What do you think? What do you think? Leave your comments below. <laughs> what do you think? Are you excited about a new traveling companion? <gasps> a new furry huck? <laughs> He's getting hyper. All right. We need to go for a walk. All right. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, say it. Say it, Huck. Say it. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. Mwah. <laughs> Bye. Wanna go for a walk? You want to go for a walk? I bet you do. You want to go for a walk? You're just such a buddy. <gasps> You're just such a baby. You hurt? You hurt? Oh, it hurts. You're getting better, but it hurts. Mr. Squiggly Butt. <gasps> Ow, you bit my face. <laughs> that really hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you, Huck. <laughs>